too. Mm -hmm. I think you talked about the Skaven a lot more than any of the other races. Okay, so we're, I'm not going to go back through them all again because that would take forever. But... Where is the thing? Not lore drop. Oh, no. I got my gamer stuff, so I'm prepared for anything. <laughs> well, of course you are. But yeah, basically what's going on is, in this series, the, the Emperor had been giving a text-to-speech device, so now he can command them once again. In this oh, episode, we're going so to hear, well. you're going to learn about the Tyranids. Since you didn't learn before, because you weren't paying attention last time. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, what um, was that? I wasn't paying attention. No, I, I would say to start with. Commissar! Commissar, <laughs> deal with him. Take him out back. Commissar, deal with him. The reason the Blood Ravens show up at the end of the game, Space Marines, is to steal the Titan you spent the entire game protecting. The It's a joke within the, basically the lore and with the fandom. The Blood Ravens are the main group that are in the RTS. They're the chapter that's in the RTS games. But they have a lot of equipment that they, by no means or rights, should have access to. Well. Give me one second. Yeah, just, just give me a second to get some tomatoes and cucumbers together right quick. I'm feeling a little snackish. Oh, dear God. Mori. Uh, I, can, can I borrow some of your lettuce? Okay, that was just a thing where they were teaching me how eligible to donate. Anyway, did you tell them about them while I was gone? I'm trying to save you. <laughs> Is he trying no. to eat Mori again? Yes. Platty, yes. no! Uh, anyway, Plattie, I was going yeah. to explain, while Platty gets hungry, I'm going to explain that, um... <laughs> that <laughs> I'm... The Blood Ravens have a bunch of equipment that by no rights they should have. So basically the whole meme is that they steal things. They just they come into a planet, yeah. save it, and then steal stuff from there. There's quite literally oh, a line yeah. from Russian Badger that goes hippity hoppity where the fuck is my property. Hippity <laughs> poppity. <laughs> I love it. Poppity, where's my property? Because they have custody gear. That they have they can get it in the video games, which that's the personal guard of the Emperor. They should have no have no way of getting that. I'm aiming for the pretender beaver. Okay, you can throw things at Platy. Anyway. But basically, under the Emperor now, he is disbanding the Inquisition and the Ecclesiarchy. Because he's pissed. Uh, also, oh, the okay. custodies are half new men anyway. What? The fuck? I have new so. people here. I don't know. That's because I had subtitles on. And we're back off to Terra. Where the Inquisition are pissed about them people trying to dis... Or, you know, get rid of them. So they're setting fire to everything and trying to see if it was heresy. Oh, look who it is. This is the leader of the Inquisition, Fyodor Karamazov. Hello, and the leader of the Pope, Ecclesiarch Decius. Salem Proctor. Salem Proctor. Who is it? You and the are treating that creature like you're dead. Uh, basically, I'm going to explain what happened because I know a bit of this. But uh, basically, there was a preacher on a planet that I, I think it was Salem Proctor. <laughs> Salem. Who basically took back his whole planet in the name of the Emperor, but was accused of heresy. And, uh, basically, Decius tried to protect them, but it was found out that one of his followers was a follower of Chaos, so they eventually killed him for that. Salem. The and, and Salem hates the Inquisition with a passion. I really do. I really, really do. But it's the Inquisition. Nobody expects it. Oh my god. <laughs> Laddie, at this point, I expect it all the time, and I hate it. 
<laughs> but yeah. So, quite literally, Fyodor Karamazov also made Deceus make a public apology to him. And he hates. So, now you like the Ecclesiarchy, but also hate Karamazov, because, dear God. Also, these are the High Lords of Terra. They run everything, from the police to the military, to, I think, the scriptures, and we have the Fabricator General over here. I have every right to Decius. I am a Lord Inquisitor for Terra's sake. Vice is that to be summoned of heresy, I will take them away and torture them until they give me an answer. That's not a chair, little Billy! That's a toilet, I think. A toilet, I think! He says his entire oh God. world. With this people, yeah. he led a his planet for the Emperor, defying the Haven to control that. Uh, a young yeah. boy was nothing but a false prophet. He lusted for power. That's oh. just not right. It's true. Well, that's right for me. Anyone got right? Oh my God. We have lunch take last Tuesday, you know. <laughs> Oh, dear God. <laughs> oh my God. I love these guys. Not right. <laughs> oh my God. Mm, really? Inquisitorial. Oh, the way this dude freaking animates this shit. It's so funny. Yeah, it's really great. It gets better later on, too. Amongst his followers. We could have known that he was tainted or not before our final judgment. It's just the same dude that made the uh, you, we lost that you showed us before. Yeah, Hunter the, the Parenting. Yeah. Um, I'll eventually show. Hilarious. Yeah, I'll eventually show Fable and Platy that too. Oh, but you can never be too careful that about the ever-present threat of chaos. Yeah, chaos. It is chaos. Dark. Yeah, and chaos. That is why I have come here as the Inquisition's own representative. I'm turning Platy up just a, to a smidge. All right, I pull up. Oh, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Why are you coming here, Kanamazo? I and almost every other Inquisitor in the galaxy have received a message from Ah, uh, here we go. Telling us that the Inquisition and the Adeptus Ministorum are to be disbanded. Yes, I know about this message. Yeah. No one here has sent it. Well, there is no doubt. It definitely came from Holy Terror itself. It has all the seals A forgery of its seal cannot possibly be this precise. However, it's claimed that the Emperor of Mankind himself wrote it. He is blasphemous. It is yeah. clearly written by a heretic. Here we go. Somewhere here on this very planet. Being such a deluded fool. Point. Oh, he's, he never has a point. Never think that for one second he has a point. for you to understand that this situation requires mending. Mending. That's a word for it. So what is your purpose here exactly, Theodore? What do you intend to do? I remember the finger I had before I replaced it with an auto quill. I just made myself sad. Uh, yes, they're going to keep Fable. They're going to keep asking about their toasters. My toasties. Toasties. I knew it. The only thing left to look forward to after the Inquisition. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Bad steak. Well, you, they're not actual toasters. Now what am I supposed to eat this oh salad with? This is bullshit. <laughs> You're not gonna <laughs> eat Mori. <laughs> You're not allowed to eat Mori. That's my girlfriend, damn it. <laughs> People just up their own bringing, bringing heads of lettuce out here and telling yeah. me I can't, I can't have lettuce. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my god. You can have lettuce, just not Mori. Kronos, if you if you were a vegetable, you'd be a cabbage. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, the Inquisition. But yeah, as you can see, Kronos, the Inquisition is usually up their own ass with um 
what they do. Yeah, I can kind of tell. Uh, sometimes they're good Inquisitors, but it's really a mixed bag. You can't really get rid of them because they have a lot of things like the Ordo Xenos, which deals with alien threats, or the Ordo Hereticus, which deals with demon threats. They're kind of important in some areas. So basically, despite them sucking so bad, they're actually important. Yes, they are important yeah, when... The, um... Like, the, like, they literally have, I think it was the Deathwing, who basically pulls in veterans from different wars with different aliens so that they can have that experience and teach others how to fight certain types of aliens. Uh, okay. Yeah, there's also, uh, the thing about the Inquisition is they literally have an Ordos for just about everything. Yeah. They, they... also <laughs> are so paranoid that they made Ordos to, uh, to watch other Ordos. There's so, the Ordo, but... uh, I... I think there's the Ordo Administratum, but I can't remember their name, whose whole thing is to record every bit of history, and then the another Ordo which uh, censors all the history. Oh, <laughs> so wow. they're constantly dealing with each other. Hmm. Yeah. So imagine, like, like Matt said, the Ordos of uh, Xenos. I'm pretty sure there's an Ordos to watch them in case they get out of hand, and it's just like, you guys really don't trust each other, do you? They don't. No, they don't. Yeah. They really don't. Anyway, really time speak. to learn about the Tyranids, the bugs that eat everything. Tyranids from another galaxy and have come here for the sole purpose of eating everything that is organic in order to grow stronger and fiercer. Yeah. They are honestly pretty damn scary. Also, Chrono, this is what a custodian look like. They are the best warriors in the world. Or the yeah. entire ah, galaxy. Okay. Quite literally, when they are in a battle, the Administratum just checks it up to a victory before they have even gotten to the battlefield. Yeah. Okay. I'm lucky to have been trained not to feel fear or anxiety over such things as a seemingly imminent doom. And you say there have been an entire three major wars against these creatures with oh, yeah. of Imperial forces involved? Yes, indeed. The first, second, and third Tyrannic War. As I said... There's actually, like, leeway to think that, uh, basically, in something that happened in the Horus Heresy might have caused the... The Tyranids to show up. Basically, they're not from our galaxy, Chrono. They're from a different galaxy. They appeared on one of the spiral arms and just hmm. started eating everything. The worst part is the gene stealer oh, cults. They, they do a thing where they basically, like, leave bits of themselves in the ground, kind of, so people will end up eating the food there and basically get connected to the hive mind. And yeah. I'm just huh. here to say yo and bonk platy. Goodbye. All Wait, right. Have Petra, a good night. Come back. Petra. I love you, my son. Oh my god, he's not your son. Why, why did you change your oh image goodness. again, Mori? <laughs> what in the world is that, Mori? It's Mori <laughs> Oh my god, big come It's camera you. guy. <gasps> okay. Uh, Moving on. Right. Yeah, so the thing about the Dean <laughs> oh, oh, is... Oh, it's Oh, shit. They I didn't realize who that was. Say... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, hello. <laughs> so, how are you doing, my favorite ocelot? <laughs> We're, we're joined here by Gordon oh, Ramsay. I wish I had that Roomba. <laughs> Roomba raid. From the Hell's Kitchen. Anyway. I get uh, that reference. Do you want to explain the Tyranids a bit, <laughs> Fable? Yes. Uh, you can. The best way to describe the Tyranids is like a plague of locusts that one day appeared in the galaxy and just started eating everything in sight. They have the ability to ever adapt to any situation. Yep. It's essentially a giant hive mind that is always adapting to any threat, which makes them so dangerous. Imagine mm. you take them out one way, but sadly, because they understand that how that's how they failed, they come back in another different, mm. stronger way. Yes, kill the bugs they, uh, a lot. They also yeah. are like an all-consuming swarm, basically. Yeah, like uh, a plague gotcha. of locusts, and they're yeah. a hive mind, which makes it so much worse. Uh, the thing about the gene stealers is, like the name implies, they essentially um, they essentially put in like uh, sleeper agents in certain worlds, and then through the process of breeding over hundreds of years, they eventually create a cult that weakens the defense of a planet, letting them take over slowly. They worship something known as the four armed emperor, which is. Just the, there's their imagination of the giant hive mind that they worship. It's really messed uh, up. Yeah. Yeah, that is pretty fucked up. Yeah. I can't believe they just go around stealing jeans like that. 
I'm gonna I slap mean, you. Everybody can you without pants. This is terrible. Oh my, my god. god. <laughs> the sad part is you would imagine that um the gene stealers actually do look really um look like aliens and like very like very gross and stuff. They have the ability to make them to make themselves look very attractive due to their psychic not really psychic energy, but due to their manipulation of people. That's why they have Damn. that's why they spread so fast, is because of the fact that they made themselves look so attractive. It is horrifying. I, I, I didn't remember. Yeah. I, I I didn't remember and I kinda wish I didn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they stripped. <laughs> Mark changed the picture again. Oh my god. No, <laughs> so it's just, Ramsey. It's just you. Oh. I'm just you. <laughs> oh. That's what it looks like when you mute. Oh, okay. That's pretty yeah. Cool. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Hmm. Uh, we'll, we'll look at Boom. Look at. For later, but for now. Devoured their entire first company. Oh yeah, during the first turn in war, they devoured the first entire company of the Ultramarines. And crippled the leader of the Ultramarines, Papa Smurf, when they first arrived. <laughs> How in the name of Lee Man Ross's overinflated ego well, did that What happen? the fuck was that? Well, yes. What in the Papa the Smurf? The uh, he called, he refers to the leader of the, or the chapter master of the Ultramarines as Papa Smurf. As I've told, oh my god! As I've told you, the Ultramarines are everywhere in every video game because uh, there was this one writer who just decided to put them everywhere because he liked them so much yeah. and made them into Mary Sue's. The oh, fandom, god. there's a meme where the fandom literally calls the Ultramarines the Smurfs or the Ultra Smurfs. Uh, they're, okay. Their credits, to their own credit, they've started to come back from that Mary Sue style of stuff, but yeah. Too bad they're not blue. They are blue. Oh, wait, they are? Yes. Yeah. The Ultramarines oh. are blue. That's the ones that... <laughs> That's why they're called the Ultra Smurfs. <laughs> that makes it even funnier. Ultra Smurfs. Yeah. But yeah. Right oh, oh my god. Anyway. Papa Smurf. Barnius Calgar. Papa Smurf to the swarm, and the event that ended the battle of decisive Imperial victory. <laughs> I can already tell this is going to be a roller coaster ride of disappointment. <laughs> tell me what happened. Roller coaster well, ride of disappointment. My... Papa Smurf and the Swarm Lord fought one another in an epic battle with two independent characters. The battle was fierce, but in the end, his tyranny proved too strong for him, resulting in him being gravely wounded. I am in Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> oh, Zeno. Zeno scum. Oh! God dang it. I meant, what color draw? Yeah. Tis Chad, but a flesh wound. Chad, I already saw what you said. You don't need to repeat it. Something similar to this apparently happened later in the year 976 yeah. with the Ultramarines called another hyphen called Perseus. However, the history of the galaxy is a major clusterfuck as it is anyway, so I don't know if that can still be considered true or not. Anyway, back to McCry. Uh, basically, there's a one point that there's a lot of things that the Ultramarines are able to do that makes no sense. Like, uh, one uh, like one v one a Catan shard, which is basically the best way to describe that two crow is basically, let's say, just a very tall, muscular man fights a god. Oh shit! And the man beats him through swordsman. I don't remember how freaking. Kato Sicarius beat a Catan shard, but still, that these things represent yeah. concepts. Because he's the legendary uh, Kato Sicarius, that's why. Like, <laughs> can you imagine trying to beat the concept of fire? Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. Sicarius can do that. Already grievous losses. The oligarch of our first company sacrificed themselves to evacuate. Yeah. So this guy could not even fight an overgrown fucking book Gargamel and ended up force feeding his bodyguards to it. Is this like the text to speech right here? Yes. That's the Emperor oh, speaking okay. through the text to speech. And yeah. That's uh, what I thought it was. I was just like, what the fuck is going on? Platty, did you That's hear what that? I thought the Papa Smurf. 
play. Did you hear that part where he said the oversized bug Gargamel? Yeah. <laughs> Gargamel. They, they made more references. Now but, I got like uh, a Hello, Void. How you been? That's why I thought the uh, Papa Smurf thing was just like a throwaway <laughs> joke or something. It's, it's a, made. It's a joke. And, there's, there's a lot of funny community jokes in the 40k universe because sometimes it's grimdark, sometimes it's just making fun of the orcs, sometimes... It's being goofy because something didn't make sense. Continue with the story. It makes my bones rattle with condensed and overpowering amusement and joy. Papa Smurf. Papa Smurf. Things were looking very grim for them. Led into a trap by a bunch of space locusts. <laughs> this is dumber than those oiled up fucking strippers I call companions. <laughs> <laughs> You'll understand what he means when you see them, uh, but yeah. I'm... Oh my god. Wow. I just think that's so funny. Oiled up space strippers. What happened to the custodians, man? Why did well, they go so wrong? <laughs> uh, you, uh, the, because because, because Brief Alpha Busa thought it was funny from the first edition. <laughs> More but yeah, I'm glad to hear you're doing well against Destiny. Can I have their numbers? Oh, but I'm not sure you would. Do you like very muscular men? Also, what? I don't know. Oh my god. Their number is 69. Oh my god. You're welcome. Oh no. <laughs> okay. But yeah, he's explaining oh, how the Ultramarines lost. Oh, I saw I wanted their numbers. So I to give it to them. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. They threw a giant spaceship against the high fleet. What? <laughs> uh, um, see, since uh, technology is kind of stagnated heavily, and there's a lot of things we can't reproduce now in the 40k universe, throwing away one of those. Throwing away one of those ships is like throwing away a one-of-a-kind nuke. Oh, damn. That's why they need toasters. Technology is pretty backwards at the moment, correct? By toasters, he means, uh, basically, those are like shards, yeah, shards of AIs that know how to rebuild stuff. Class battleships are pretty much irreplaceable at this point. Oh, I will, don't worry. Resources and manpower needed to make them, correct? More or less, yes. So this yeah, did you hear what he said? Instead, her class battleships are pretty much irreplaceable at this point because of the sheer resources and manpower needed to make them, correct? <laughs> so this asshole Papa Smurf, instead of just calling back his fleet to a more advantageous position in, you know, fucking space, let one of those warships be lost forever in the warp for some depraved minion of chaos to find and diddle around with. <laughs> this is getting me harder than Terminator armor. <laughs> oh my god. I want you to The Titan my losses? Life. Oh my god, they lost Titans. <laughs> oh yeah, they lost Titans Magnus without the Geller fields turned on. Oh, that's what he wants them to do. Let's see how mm -hmm. Uh to basically, basically what a Geller field is is you know like faster than light travel chrono. Yeah. You're doing that through the warp. It's warp travel. Basically, you're going through what is where all the demons reside. And Galler Fields oh, basically okay. hide you from the demons when you're going through. So he's asking them to turn them off while going doing this. To get back, Magnus, without the Galler Fields turned on. He wants them to go the Let's see how they enjoy being fucked by demons, like those poor assholes in the battleships. Oh my. Anyway. Oh my god. Avoiding <laughs> oh the subject my. of the Alpha Marines further. These tyrannids actually sound pretty fucking fascinating. How easy my job would be if every human was just part of me and my giant intelligence, and everything we did was in perfect harmony. That sounds terrifying. Actually, remind me about that idea when I get off of this fucking throne. I'll make sure to do that. <laughs> the human right mind would surely be something fantastic to be part of. You're just saying that because you're thoroughly trained to be my bodyguard, and not ever think, nor feel, or have any other purpose in life. That's right, my lord! Fucking automaton. <laughs> so, and yeah. these fucking automatons. These come from the eastern fringe of the mm. galaxy in large bug flesh ships and chomps. Oh yeah, the high fleets. Yes? Mm. 
and every encounter recorded with them describes them as insect-like creatures with biological They are. And that they are some, in some of them literally have guns on their back, like biological guns. Dear God. Yeah, and I each one of them does something different. I'm still listening, uh, but I'll be right back. Platy, I'm gonna I'm kill you for that joke. I'm my back. Gun. Oh my God. Play a little bit the, there are some Tyranids that also have Psyker abilities, which is very strange because I'm not sure what their presence is in the warp. But they, they have no presence in the warp. They literally have a shadow in the warp, which is oh, weird. Oh, yeah. They literally... The, that's the reason the demons hate them is because whenever they fight them, they kind of become super weakened to the point of non-existence. Yeah. But yet they have their own version of Psykers, which is like, what? How does that work? Because psychers are basically space wizards projecting their power of their mind through the immaterium yeah. or the warp. And the warp in time. Has anyone ever considered fucking bug spray? <laughs> I'm sorry, my lord, but bug spray. <laughs> bug spray. Sorry, I forgot. They stopped manufacturing those after the dark age of technology. Well, my lord, if it's a biochemical weapon you're referring to, I can say that it is not of much use. Yeah. Something that the species seem to have picked up on, and many of them also have extremely advanced immune systems. It's kind of crazy how these things work. In addition, the race is very adaptable, and if we actually were to concoct a poison against them to use it, they'd most likely gain resistance to it soon after. That is quite a fucking pickle. Is there anything that works against them? It's not regular steel on bullets, there's actually a special mutagenic acid developed by the Death Watch that ruins the target's organs from inside and out. That it sounds fucking horrifying. That's the, uh... it works fairly well. the... Yeah, the Death Watch is the military arm of the, the Ordo Xenos. Yeah, it's... I can't believe they're just micro-dosing bugs with acid. Oh my god, I'm going to strangle this platypus. Then why have any of you fucking idiots had the idea of filling a massive space-sized spray can with a <laughs> oh my god. oxygen, promethium, and this hellfire compound, and spray the fuck out of the Tyranids organic fleet while still in space? That's a great idea, my emperor. You are truly the most intelligent being in the galaxy. Side. Oh my god. Sometimes I wish I hadn't made I'm just surprised there's not any like huge bear creatures in this, in this world. I mean in Warhammer Fantasy there are there's Ursin the bear god. Bear? No. <laughs> uh oh, yeah. actually there is a lesser known uh Xenos race of giant polar bears and chips. I'm not I even kidding. Not. I didn't know that, but yeah, for those that don't know, Platy is afraid of bears because he owes bears money. They're not getting it back. <laughs> <laughs> and also kicked a bunch of cubs in the knee. Yes, he's scared of bears. Because he uh, owes them money. He owes the he owes the bear mafia money. Here sometimes. Oh, the <laughs> oh, the well. Fucking a tama <laughs> He knew them. Well, my lord, as those so Oh yeah, necrons. Sleepy and skeletons now. I told Chrono about the neck. I taught Chrono about the necrons, but well, he you didn't pay them. attention. You know of them? Uh, uh, well, at least they aren't as bad as the necrons are like undead I, um, people, aren't they? Kinda. You're. I'll give you a half a point for that. I remember some things, but not all of it. That's because you were busy playing Animal Crossing! It was so much information, man! <laughs>